Frisky goes to school. The birthday party soon became a memory as the children started studying in earnest for the annual examinations which were soon upon them. Why was it that time seemed to fly when you wanted it to slow down? The school had a sombre air around it once more as children pored over their books and notes whenever there was time to spare. Gone was the boisterous banter and back slapping. The sports ground wore a deserted look too. The only places which bustled with activity were the library and the cafeteria. Notes were exchanged frantically and doubts cleared at the last minute. Before you knew it, the exams had arrived. The exams were spaced out so that there was a day's gap between each subject paper, which was a relief. Anna rushed through breakfast as she went over her notes on science. She was confident enough, but revising her notes was a habit that she was uncomfortable letting go of. Soon it was time. She shoved her notes into her school bag, which suddenly appeared very roomy as the number of books had decreased, and rushed to rinse her mouth before getting into the car. Giri took her bag and put it into the car so they would not waste any time and soon they were on their way. The children were asked to leave their bags and belongings near the blackboard of the classroom before the question papers were distributed. The exam commenced quite uneventfully as every child including David was engrossed in attempting to answer as many questions as they could. There was pin drop silence in the class. The only sound that you heard was that of the fans overhead, of which there were two. Sister Agnes was the invigilator and just as she was about to settle down into a short reverie, she thought she heard a soft mewing. She looked around but could see nothing and so she assumed that she must have been mistaken. There was that sound again and lo and behold, one water bottle fell to the ground revealing a little kitten staring with bewilderment at the strange surroundings. Sister Agnes let out a shriek and the little kitty jumped and ran towards the window. There was mayhem in the classroom as the children yelled and jumped. Anna was shocked out of her wits. She sat there pale faced as she saw little Frisky running amok. How had this happened? Poor little Frisky made a dash for the door and shut out of sight. Anna was mortified. What if something were to happen to her little pet? Sister Agnes had noticed the tiny red ribbon around Frisky's neck and wanted to know whose pet this was. Anna raised her hand and softly apologized, saying she did not know how Frisky had gotten into her bag as that was where she had emerged from. Sister Agnes' stern face softened as she looked at the stricken girl. She believed Anna and told the class to get back to their question papers while she tried to arrange help to trace the kitten. A couple of office boys were summoned as well as three sweepers and they were tasked with looking for the wayward kitten. They dispersed in different directions and looked into various classrooms with little luck till there was a yell heard in one of the toilets. They ran towards the sound only to see Frisky dash across the corridor and down the stairs. The poor little creature was frightened out of her wits. These five adults were no match for the nimble kitten and once she hit the grounds, they lost sight of her. Anna found it exceedingly difficult to concentrate on her paper and somehow got through with answering as best as she could before submitting her answer sheet to Sister Agnes and requesting her for permission to go and look for Frisky. The truth be told, Sister Agnes was a little worried as well as there was no news of the kitten yet. She prayed that the little one was still on the school premises and not in any danger. Anna quickly retrieved her bag, shoved her pencil box and scale into it, placed it at the back of her wheelchair and went in search of her little feline friend. She saw the five men on the ground floor and headed out towards them. 
As she approached, one of the boys named Paul saw her and told her that they were trying to trace the kitten. They had seen her head towards the trees near the cafeteria but were not sure if she was still there. Poor Frisky. She must be frightened and hungry, thought Anna. She headed in the direction that the men pointed to, softly calling out to Frisky. Her wheelchair wobbled over the rough ground as she bumped across a rough patch. As she approached the little cluster of trees, she paused and listened while gently calling her name. Frisky, Frisky, come here, girl. There she heard a soft mewing. Anna's heartbeat increased as the excitement got to her. Oh, Frisky, she called out to the kitten again and heard a feeble but louder response. She approached the tree that she thought the sound came from and peered into the foliage. There she was, perched on one of the branches, hunched up with fear. Oh, the poor thing! Anna's heart went out to her as she opened her arms and called out to her. Frisky put one paw before another as she gingerly felt her way down the branch. She flung herself onto Anna who caught her and held her close. Anna felt her trembling with fear and petted her gently to calm her down. The cafeteria manager quickly brought out a saucer of warm milk which Frisky hurriedly lapped up. You would think that she had not eaten for days. Everyone who had gathered around was relieved. Anna thanked the men who had helped and the canteen manager before picking up the errant kitten and making her way to the parking lot. She asked the boys to send word to Sister Agnes that Frisky had been found before she got into the car and they made their way home. Giri was surprised to see Frisky with Anna and the ride back was spent regaling him with the day's adventure. What a day it had been! Anna could not wait to get back and tell her mother all about it. That night, before she went to bed, Anna decided to write about the day's adventure in her favorite manner of poetry. This was what she wrote. The Lost Kitten The classroom was silent. And then there was this sound, a faint meow that pierced the quietness all around. Anna looked at the teacher who stared at the school bags. Out popped Kitty's head. Oh dear, that was Anna's bag. Anna's heart skipped a beat. How did Kitty get in there? Out leaped Kitty and landed on her feet. Yells and shrieks soon rent the air. Poor Kitty got frightened as she took a look around. She ran under the desks. There were mayhem all around. Out of the class she darted. Anna's heart strongly pounded. She asked the teacher if she could follow her. But with a stern look, she was grounded. She was told to finish her exam while office boys were summoned. To look for the errant Kitty would take time it was reasoned. Anna rushed through the test and implored beseechingly. The teacher agreed to let her go, although reluctantly. Everywhere in the building did Anna and the boys look, beneath the staircase as well as every corner and nook. Nowhere was Kitty to be found and they soon reached the end of their search. At last, they decided to scan the grounds. A branch of a tree was where she was perched. She looked down upon them, trembling with fear. Anna called out to her lovingly as she drew her wheelchair near. It was a bowl of warm milk that seemed to do the trick. The hungry kitty sprang into Anna's lap real quick.